Hi everybody, it's Dr. Zelkin, uh, here today to answer an age-old question, and by age-old I mean like a year old. Um, am I a good candidate for buccal fat pad removal? Uh, everybody's asking me, you know, I've got chubby cheeks, or, you know, what, what's my buccal fat? Is, it, is, is this my buccal fat? Is this my buccal fat? Uh, and when I see patients, uh, it's not something that I can continue to impress without further clarifying the anatomical structures that need to be addressed and are addressed during buccal fat pad removal. So one thing I want to lead off with is this. The buccal fat pad is not a, is not the cheek, and taking out the entirety of the buccal fat pad is not going to make your cheek gaunt. It's not like your whole cheek is consisting of this buccal fat pad. It is a distinct anatomic structure that herniates through other distinct anatomic structures, and it becomes relevant based on the surrounding architecture of your face. And so as I'm sort of thinking about how I can communicate this important three-dimensional concept in two dimensions on a video screen, I was thinking to myself, well, I have an easy answer. And I took a old, uh, an old piece of paper or cardboard, and you can do the same thing at home, and kind of came up with this structure, which is somebody's cheek. And it's really complex looking, but it's not. And maybe we can like, photocopy this and make a PDF so you can cut it out and do it on yourself. Essentially, if this is your ear, and this is your jawline, this is the nasal labial fold or mouth, and this is your malar bone or your cheekbone. What I'm trying to do is show that there is a frame around the buccal space of your, of your mouth, around the buccal fat pad region. And what the operation does is it tries to create a flat plane on your cheek as opposed to having something bulge out. In better cases, sometimes it even comes in a little bit. So if you think of somebody extreme like Jennifer Garner or somebody like that where you can actually see this masseter or muscle and a depression in front of it, that's somebody who has a very hollow buckle space to begin with. Um, so this is like a little bit of a cheat sheet to see if you are a candidate for the procedure. Um, I can just look at you and tell you, but if you're at home and you're trying to figure out if you're going to benefit from buckle fat pad removal, here's how to do it. Create something like this out of cardboard, not too pliable, not something that will easily fold, something a little bit rigid. Uh, this is a great thing. When you have the frame of the buckle space, it's great but you also need to account for your masseter muscle. If you have a huge masseter muscle, for example, uh, it needs to be addressed because the buccal fat pad falls in, within these borders here. So I'm gonna take a patient that you guys probably know, my uh, doctor of nurse practitioner, Nurse Sophia, uh, she can come here real quickly. Um, and I wanna show you, you can take off your mask for the sake of this video. Um, I really think that one of her most uh, um, stunning features, if you will, is the fact that she has a really flat plane along the cheek. And that's something that I can't really capture in, in film because um, anybody can look good in a certain direction. If you pose like this, for example, you'll hide contour irregularities. But if we were to say, let's see how flat it really is. If I were to really kind of push this on her cheek, it's hard for me to see something come out. You can see that this whole plane is pretty flat. There's nothing herniating in front of that masseter muscle. And this represents the masseter muscle here. So honestly, if I were to do buccal fat pad removal on someone like Nurse Sophia, I feel that it's gonna give her a little depression, but it's not gonna enhance her beauty per se. She is not a great candidate for the procedure unless she really specifically wants that sculpted look. Um, you can uh, do what? And everybody else, of course, knows, without further ado, uh, Nurse Mickey, um, our beautiful nurse injector. Um, very nice facial features, uh, but she also, like myself, even though she's thin, is a candidate for buccal fat pad removal. And the reason I would identify that is we've done a lot of masseter reduction. So we flattened this, and she has a nice cheekbone, she has a flat posterior face. But because of that, without addressing the anterior face, you can see that by applying the same template over her face, it's pretty clear that there's a little bit of a herniation or pooching of tissue right here. It's not a flat plane like it would be on somebody else who's not necessarily a good candidate for the procedure. So where does the operation reduce tissue? It's in this space, bordered by the masseter, the malar region, the mandible. Think of it as the four M's in the mouth. So if you can frame these four M's and something's pooching out here, buccal fat pad removal not only is gonna reduce that and create that uh, sort of improved plane, but this shadow, this sort of curvilinear shadow around the buccal space will also go away. So Mickey, like myself, is an awesome candidate. Hi everybody. Now I have an opportunity to take off my mask. Um, so it seems like 
getting this uploaded and having you guys make it yourself might not be the easiest solution. So I'd like to take an opportunity to show you a little DIY and how to make this sort of template to give yourself an idea of whether or not this operation may benefit you. So the way to start would be to get a piece of cardboard, um, you know, kind of a thick piece of paper. I think this is from a manila folder, but any sort of thick but not hard surface that's pliable like this would work. Um, and depending on how big or small your face is, uh, roughly a, a nine by nine centimeter, that's three and a half uh, by three inches, uh, three and a half inches is what I used for my staff and myself, and that seems to work pretty well. So if you were to mark out, for example, three and a half inches or nine centimeters on both sides, that's one here, and then come across and make another one right here. If you were to draw it out as a series of straight lines, that'll give you a, you know a rough guideline. It doesn't have to be perfectly uh, plumb, but the better you know the closer the better. Um, the next thing I do, and this is assuming that this is for the uh, the your left cheek, would be to write Malar here on top, would be to write Masseter on the right side, would be to write Mandible on the bottom, and would be to write Mouth on the left side here. Uh, and then mark a point approximately two centimeters up from the bottom. Rather two centimeters from the left on the bottom of the mandible. And then three centimeters up from the bottom on the right. And connect these dots. Now you can use scissors or an X-Acto knife or a razor blade, something or box cutter. Um, I'm putting, a, I'm using a book as a backing here, but this would be sort of a rule of thumb. So this is three centimeters. That's two centimeters. This whole distance is nine centimeters, which is 3.5 inches square and 3.5 inches square. So this is going to be our template guide and you can make a smaller subset or a border within it of about, uh, two centimeters on each side. So in this case, what I would do is I would create a border here of two centimeters coming this way, two centimeters coming this way, just leaving a little bit behind so you have a frame, two centimeters from the bottom, and two centimeters from the top. I'll see if I could pop this out. All right. And you can use anything. You don't have to use an exact knife or a 10 blade like I did. And then cut out the outer part here. And this is a great starting point. Now that you have this cut out, it looks a lot like the template that we made for today's video, a little bit more thoughtfully. And you can see that there's one part missing and that's that masseter muscle, which is this part right here is very important. It's the, it's the posterior edge of what I'm considering the frame. And it goes, if this is your ear and this is your mouth and this is the left side of your face like this, the masseter muscle goes in this orientation. So if you take a post-it note and you can move this back and forth to whatever is easiest for you. If you take a post-it note of a different color, it makes it pretty clear to see, you know, what side the masseter is gonna go on. Everybody's anatomy is different. So if you have a masseter that's really big or really small, you may be able to do this forward or back. But this is a very easy sort of DIY, homemade way of creating the same template that I just made for you. If you follow these easy steps, it'll give you some semblance of whether or not you fall in the category of patients that have herniation right here as I do meaning that you're a candidate for some degree of buckle fat reduction.